Hello and welcome to Barry Aftercare, the podcast, or Barry Aftercare Live, wherever you happen to be watching or listening today. I'm Dr. Connie Stapleton, and today we're going to talk about how frustrating it can be to continue with the effort <laughs> required for maintaining and developing and sustaining a healthy lifestyle and keeping the weight off once you've lost it. But we're going to do this from a perspective of congratulating yourselves. Because, you know, if you think about it, you have done tremendously amazing things already in your life. And sometimes it really helps to take a look at what have I done well? What have I done in the past in my life where I've had to sustain effort? Meaning I've had to keep doing the hard things it takes to get the job done. And the reason we're going to talk about this is because we need to give ourselves some credit, maybe a boost in terms of looking at, I can do these things. I've done some incredibly hard things in the past and I can do this difficult thing as well. Now, if you've chosen to have weight loss surgery, it's not nearly as hard to get the weight off as the many times you have probably tried to lose weight in the past, right? That is the gift, the beauty, the opportunity of weight loss surgery. It allows you to get that weight off that you've tried for so, so, so long. The effort comes in to maintain that weight loss, just like any other time you ha may have lost weight. No matter how much weight you've lost in the past, if you've kept it off, it required some effort. And a lot of people, people, you know, doubt themselves. They think, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I've struggled in the past. I haven't been able to before. But I want you to look at some ways you've done this. You've maintained effort through some hard things in your life. Let's look at the area of things like education, your job, driving a car, your relationships, you know, community service work or volunteer work. I want to talk about these each a little bit individually, because in each one of these things, whatever you've accomplished in your life, you've had to put forth a tremendous amount of effort. So let's start with education. Maybe you got a high school diploma. Maybe you got a GED. Some of you have gone on and gotten associate's degrees or specialties like you know, you've got certifications as nursing assistants, or you've gotten technician degrees, or you've gotten ongoing education for IT. Whatever level of education you've received, you've put a lot of effort into it. School takes time. So however far you went in school, you put forth the time. You have put forth a lot of commitment. Because school, to the best of my memory, <laughs> and God knows I did a lot of school, right, requires a time commitment and a commitment of effort in terms of homework, in terms of getting yourself up out of bed in the morning to get there, in terms of finding a way to and from school, whatever that meant. And if you continued your education past high school, or if you went to a private school, it cost money. Now, some of you, like myself, maybe had to pay for every bit of your college yourself. So that required maybe time, commitment, and effort to a job while you were going to school. So think about whatever degree of education you completed you did that for a lot of days. I don't care if you went to the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. That's a lot of days and years spent putting forth effort, at least to some degree, right? And most of us put forth a considerable, considerable amount of energy and effort into school. And we did that day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. So you're capable because you've done this. So sometimes when you start to, start to doubt yourself, it's really a good idea to go, you know what? I can do hard things. I completed however many grades of school and that required effort. Let's talk about your job. Many people, most people, 
adults have had some job in their lifetime. Maybe you currently work. And if you currently have a job, let me remind you, you need to pat yourself on the back because maintaining a job requires horrific, that's not the right word, requires tremendous amounts of effort. Maybe it's horrific. Maybe you hate your job and it requires even more effort to get there. But if you've got a job, you had to put forth effort to possibly have an interview. Depending on the job, maybe you had to go through two or three interviews to get the job. You have to, again, put forth effort to get up, get yourself ready, and get to the job every day that you work. And hopefully, you put the effort to get there on time, meaning you keep the job, right? And then there are performance reviews. Most jobs have performance reviews. And that is going to give you some feedback about the kind of effort you're putting in. Again, I bring this up because I want you to remember, sometimes when the going gets tough, when it comes to the gotta do -ums, eating the protein first, eating every three to four hours, drinking the water, you have done hard things before and you've done them for long periods of time. You can do this too. Let's take something like a simple, it's not simple, but something that I think a lot of us take for granted, which is our driver's license. Most of us have a driver's license. And if you've got a driver's license, then I know that you put forth some effort to get that driver's license. Nobody just came to your house one day and said, here's your license. You know, most of us had to take some kind of driver's education class. Way back in the day when I was in school, I mean, we took a literal driver's education class. I think it was after school or something. And then we did the, you know, the student driving with the driving person who graded us. And then there was also a written exam. Now it's on a computer. The point being, if you wanted a driver's license, you had to put forth some effort. Maybe you had to study the laws or the signs or whatever it was so that you could pass the exam. You probably had to pay for it to take the exam. You had to pay for your license. You had to take time out of your day in your life to go sit at the DMV and whoever likes doing that, right? So if you have a driver's license, then I know you're capable of putting forth effort. Now let's talk about the things that we all do on a day-to-day -day basis that require a lot of effort, and that's relationships. If you're in a relationship of any kind, then I am going to always struggle to believe you if you tell me you can't do the things required to keep weight off. Because if you're in a relationship and it's any kind of healthy relationship, then I know you are doing some really tough things because decent relationships aren't decent without a considerable amount of effort, right? So if you have a partner or a spouse, if you have children, if you maintain decent relationships with your siblings, or your parents, or your friends, then you're doing some things that require effort, such as uh, communication. Now, many of us put forth a little additional effort into our communication, to be kind, to say please, to say thank you, to use decent manners, to be comforting, to be encouraging if we want to have good relationships, right? That requires effort. To have a healthy relationship requires the effort of thinking of the other person and what's good for them as well as what's good for us. If you have a healthy relationship, then you have put forth effort to make compromises. Good relationships depend to some degree on compromises. So that takes a lot of effort because it would just be easier for all of us, of course, to say, oh, let's just do it my way. But that's not how it works in relationships, at least not healthy ones, right? And in relationships, trust me, a woman who's been married almost 38 years, there is <laughs> a lot of effort on both of our parts to put forth some acceptance, to accept each other the way we are. 
I wish he would think more like I do. He wishes I would think more like he does. He wishes I would respond in the ways he does and vice versa. But we are two very different people, as are most people in relationships, right? So it takes a lot of effort to accept that this is the way he is or this is the way she is. And it takes a lot of attitude adjustment. Relationships require a lot of effort. I think you get the point, right? What about parenting? What about taking care of aging parents? What about friendships? All relationships require time. If you're going to have an ongoing healthy relationship, you've got to put time into it. If you've got aging parents or a sick child or a friend that needs assistance, it requires some of your time. That requires effort because we all have busy, busy, busy lives. Patience. Patience with children. Oh, takes tremendous amount of patience with children or spouses and ourselves. Friends, parents, relationships require the effort of putting forth some patience. So if you take care of your kids, there's medical needs, there's school needs, there's extracurricular activities. My God, you got to feed them every day. That in and itself requires planning and purchasing and shopping and all that takes time, right? You got to have money to pay for these things. So again, we're back to working. So if you think you struggle with the ability to put forth consistent effort, I want you to back up and rethink this. Because if you're doing any of these things that I've talked about, you have the ability to put forth effort on a consistent basis. And then consider if you do any kind of volunteer work or community service, if you lead up any projects or if you're a scout leader or if you coach a kid's team or, you know, geez, just paying our bills, all of these things. We put forth a lot of effort and sometimes we forget to give ourselves credit. So a lot of times I'm on here kicking in the butt to do things, right? Today I'm giving you lots of affirmation because I want you to give yourself affirmation. And I want you to give yourself affirmation because you do more than you give yourself credit for. And you don't look at it that way. It's like, I'm just taking care of my kids. Well, yeah, hopefully you're a responsible parent and you accept the responsibility of taking care of your children, right? But if you break down the skills required to take care of your children like I just did, or maintain your job, or go to school and to, to get degrees and to follow through with volunteer activities, you know how to follow through. You know how to put forth effort. So we're going to talk in a minute about why does it sometimes easier to do the things it takes to raise your children or to get yourself to the job or to complete a project at home or whatever it is. Why does it seem easier to put forth the effort to those things than to put forth the effort to do the God of Doom's? Because the God of Doom's are necessary to keep weight off, right? So why do we struggle with that idea thinking, I just can't do this. I just, I've, I've tried before. I just don't follow through. Life happens. I get stressed and I don't follow through with the effort. You keep parenting in times of stress. Most of us keep going to work in times of stress. Most of us continue to take care of the ailing parents in times of stress because that is the time of stress, right? So again, give yourselves credit for the things that you have done and are doing that require consistent effort, even when life is stressful. The reason I bring that up is because a lot of people say they fall off the wagon with their healthy lifestyle when life is stressful. Not you. Not you. Because you've been through stress before. You may be going through stress now. Hell, we all live stressful lives. But many of us keep putting forth the effort in many areas of our lives, which tells me, and I want it to tell you, you can do this. I can do this, and I know I can do this because I do it in many other areas. So when I talk about putting forth effort, some of it requires physical effort, like exercise requires physical effort, helping parents 
get to and from the car if they're old and aging or to and from dentist appointments or in and out of the shower or whatever. Some of the effort is physical, some of it is emotional. So we have to understand that the effort we put forward comes from both physical and mental. And a lot of that applies to the difficulty we have in sustaining the effort to keep our healthy habits up. So we have to put forth a lot of mental effort into those kinds of things, right? Effort means we're putting forth strenuous or earnest attempts. We keep putting one foot in front of the other. We don't give up. It's hard work. It's exertion. I don't like hard work. I don't like exertion. Well, guess what? You do it in a thousand ways every day. I know. That's why I don't have any left for this weight loss thing. No, 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 no. You've got it. That's the mental part, right? That's the mental part. And putting you as high a priority as your aging parent or your child or your job. Taking care of your health is critical to be able to keep doing all those other things, right? So you put forth the effort because you have a goal, right? The goal with your job is to get a paycheck, maybe some personal satisfaction and helping others along the way, all the better. But a lot of us keep our day job because it provides us money to pay the bills and buy the kids clothes and buy the food and pay for the extracurriculars, right? And we might not want to do that any more than we might want to exercise, but we do it because we have a goal. We do it because we have an end, an end in mind. I have to have that money so I can pay my bills, right? So you've got to keep in mind your specific purpose or your goals. You've done so many amazing things, right? This lets us know we're capable of putting forth effort even when the going gets tough. So give yourself credit for that. Give yourself credit for all the things you do that you have done, that you've accomplished, and that you continue to do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It's important. And it might even be, it might even be a good idea or maybe even necessary for you to remember these things, to write them down or make a scrapbook or, you know, jot things down on your hand. I don't know. What do you have to do to remember? I've done this, right? If you've learned to golf, if you've learned to sew, if you've written a poem, if you've written a book, if you've set an exercise goal and, a, and achieved it, you know, if you've had an educational or a career goal, then you have done the hard work and not just for a day or a week. You're probably continuing to do it in many of those areas. So give yourself the credit and know and remind yourself, I can do difficult things. I can persist with the hard work and effort. And that builds self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, what is self-efficacy? It's the idea and the reality that I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. So we have what I call a transferable skill, right? And we're going to talk about transferable skills because if you've done something in one area of your life, then you apply that to another area of your life. And in this case, we're talking about sustaining a healthy lifestyle, not losing weight. That's where the surgery comes in to help, right? We're talking about sustaining the weight after you've lost it through the opportunity and the gift of weight loss surgery. And then you say, but I've never been able to keep the weight off. All right, let's take these transferable skills and take what you've done to complete other goals and apply them here. So what kept you going when you had to stay up? Maybe you had to stay up like two or three or 10 nights with a sick child. Or maybe you had a really sick child or a sick parent and you had to continue to care for them while you had your job and while you were in school or whatever the case may be. What kept you going? What kept you going in school? You know, turning in those assignments. Not just one day. When I'm in school, it was assignments every week or every day. 
But it was week after week after week, month after month after month, year after year after year after a lot of years in my case, right? Like 12 years of college, that's a lot. Was it 12 or eight? Four undergrad, two, that's six, plus four is 10. So I was somewhere in the middle. But that's a lot of years. And if you went to 10 years total, that's still 10 years of school where you continued day after day, week after week. What keeps you currently taking your children to the dentist, taking your children to the doctor, taking your children to therapy if they need it, taking them to get any kind of, you know, special education kinds of things they need? What keeps you taking your children to their ac extracurricular activities? Because all of these things require effort. Your job requires effort. School requires effort. Taking your kids to these things, right? And I'm guessing, in fact, I'd say I'm pretty sure that part of what keeps you going were the goals. And when it comes to working with sustaining your healthy weight, sustaining a healthy lifestyle, it's back to those meaningful matters. I want to be healthy. I want to be able to do the things that I want to do. I want to be able to take care of my own hygiene needs. I want to be able to tie my own shoes. I want to be able to be more independent. And I want to be off as many medications as possible. Those are my meaningful matters for my health. So just like the paycheck keeps you putting forth the effort every day for your money, right? And just as the goal of wanting your children to be healthy, happy, involved, healthy adults one day, you continue to put forth the effort. As much as you want your parents, your aging parents to be as comfortable, to maintain their medical health, to maintain, you know, their dental health, to get to all the appointments they need to, to have some sort of social life if they're capable, you put forth the effort to help make that possible. You do it, you do it, you do it. You need to do it with the goal in mind of your happy, healthy life, your meaningful matters. We talked about that several months ago, right? You want to do all these things so you can live the life that you want to, right? So, this business of engaging in malarkey and shenanigans, which we talked about last week, making excuses, right? Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I just am too tired. Oh, I can't, you know, I get too stressed to maintain the effort to put forth for my own health. That is a bunch of crap. That is shenanigans. It's malarkey. It's BS. Don't buy it, right? You are capable of sustained effort and you do it every day. So look at those areas and make the choice to continue with the effort. And then I really want you to think about this. It's like, oh God, so much is so hard. Let me ask you, really, really, is it really so hard to drink water? I'm thinking it's not. It's not really that hard to drink water. It's not like you really got to, oh boy, this is tough, man. I got to really go out of my way. It's a whole lot easier to drink water than it is to do a 10-page paper for a homework assignment. It's a whole lot easier to drink water through the day probably than it is to get through the traffic jam to get you to your job, right? It's not hard to drink water, friends, all right? Is that really so hard? Is it really so hard? to put protein in your mouth before other foods. It's not really that hard to put an egg into your mouth before you put something else. It's not really that hard to eat meat before you eat something else or fish or tofu. It's not really that hard to drink a protein drink in the morning instead of going without breakfast. These aren't hard things. So, Quit saying it's hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's hard. And I know in some ways it really is hard. I'm, I know that. However, if you break it down, is it really so hard to write down what you eat? It's not hard. 
it takes a little bit of effort, like as in two minutes, maybe, because most of those apps have your same things in there and it doesn't hardly take any time at all. Doing the gotta dooms is certainly not as difficult as a lot of the tasks you do on your job. Certainly not as difficult as maintaining three children's schedules. Certainly not as difficult as getting your aging parents to all the things you need to get them to, right? The real truth is we put our own needs on the back burner and that's not going to cut it. Your children are important. Your job is important. Your parents are important and you are important. I had a woman say to me today, well, isn't that what we do as parents? you know, put everybody else ahead of ourselves. I said, it depends on what you want to teach your children. If you want to teach your children that you don't matter so that when they grow up, they don't think they matter. Yeah, do it. But if you want to teach your children that they matter and you matter, then you say, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk for 30 minutes. You can come with me. Or if they're old enough to stay home, or if there's another adult in the house, you can choose to stay home, but I'm going to do this, right? So again, yeah, we put other people ahead of our own needs at times, but what do you want to teach other people? And what do you want to remind yourself of that you don't matter or you matter as well? Make it a win-win. So on Thursday, I'm going to talk about the part of this that really is hard because there is some difficulty, not necessarily in the got to do but there's definitely difficulty in keeping weight off. And part of that is biological. So on Thursday, in Berry Aftercare, which you can be a part of by going to www.berryaftercare.com, I'm going to talk about the difficulty in maintaining weight loss, whether you lose that weight with or without surgery. The body fights against us, and that is the disease of obesity. The body's going to try to gain some weight back. So we're going to learn a little bit about that on Thursday. And we're going to talk about what to do about these things that truly are difficult. Distinguishing between the excuses we make for the things that really aren't that hard and the things that really are hard and how to overcome those. So I had a great time with you today. I hope you learned something that you can put into practice in your life. Choose joy, choose happiness. You know, I had such a fun weekend. I went away with a girlfriend of mine and we just had a girl's weekend and life is too short. Life is so short. We just don't know. So take advantage of living fully every day and put forth the effort so that you can live happier life longer. All right. It's your health. It's your responsibility. Make good choices. All right, guys, I will see you Thursday. Thanks for spending the time with me today. Bye-bye.